Hi, everyone. Welcome to Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Welcome to you all. I wanted to bring you a special recording today of a guest that was willing and very kind to come on the show. I've invited Susan on. And um, thank you so much, Susan, for being here. No problem. <laughs> Great. Um, so we've all been following the Daybell case, all of us. My channel has been following it from day one and um, the Daybell Vallow case. And I think people are pretty curious about the victims and the suspects and what their life was like before all this went down, who they might have been, who people that knew them. And um, I know there's been other interviews out there with people that know the Coxes, but you do have experience with the Coxes. And um, I think it'd be really interesting for you to kind of tell your story, how you met them, how you knew them, if that's okay. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> Still nervous. That's okay. I, I'm telling you, when I started my channel, I, everybody, I never intended to show my face even. And then people in the chats were like, do a live stream. I was like, no, <laughs> no. And then I did it. And then I did it more. You get more comfortable with time. So I know you don't do this every day, so. Or every week, <laughs> but just try to pretend we're on a call, like a phone call. That works, right? <laughs> yep. All right. So yeah, just tell us how you knew them, how you met them, who you met first, and a little bit about yourself with that situation. Okay. So I haven't talked about this much because people are really judgmental. <laughs> so I've kind of been low, like just not wanting to talk to anyone, but I think it's been really difficult because people are so willing to put everything on them because of what they did now. Um, it just, it, it's not what, what I saw, not the family that I saw. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And that's good. I think we need to see every side, really. I think it's important to humanize, you know, how, why, what, you know, no matter what the tragedy was, I think um, I think it's interesting. I think it's important for us to see a little glimpse of people that knew the family and what they were about before and what, right. how you feel about them, you know? So, yeah. So, well, like I said, I, I was single, had two little kids. Um, I'd only been divorced for just a little while. And my girlfriend in Salt Lake um, wanted to introduce me to someone so oh, this is, gosh, when dating online, things like that, it was very, very new. Um, so she had a friend that dated Alex, and then she wanted to introduce me to him. And of course, there's a big, you know, it was long distance. So I was Mormon, um, and we started talking on the phone. And um, he would do the voices all the time. My kids, they, they absolutely loved it. My brother Alex is the talented one in our family. And you're about to hear why. Okay, are you ready? So I told you he, he's all about cartoons, TVs, and movies. I'm just going to rattle off something, random things. And you're going to hear the impression and then the, the actual lines from the movie. Are you ready? Okay. Alex, are you ready? I think so. All right, let me face this over to Al. All right, give me Bugs Bunny and Little Red Riding Hood from Saturday Morning Cartoons. Da, <coughs> on the blink and my papa's at work, so I ink. And he's still in the factory because he doesn't know what time it happens to me. And then, yeah, what's in the basket, gorgeous? <laughs> I'm taking this bunny rabbit for my grandma to have, see? He's got a nice pair of stems for a rabbit. Yeah, it's got a cute face too, see? <laughs> I love it. Okay, now now we're going to switch gears. Go from that to Droopy the dog. Listen, watch this. Mr. Dragon, do you know what? I am going to slay you. Love it. Now, what what about Sylvester the cat? Remember the Sylvester the cat from Saturday morning? Oh, father. Oh, the shame of it all. How can I ever show my face again? Now, wait a minute, son. <laughs> It just cracks me up to watch him do, like, cartoons. <laughs> a grown man that does a lot of cartoons. All right, what about Shaggy and Scooby? Why, hey, Scooby, man, was that go scary? Yeah, scary. <laughs> That's great. Um, so we did, we talked a lot um, on the phone. And then 
we wanted to meet in person. So I flew from Salt Lake to Texas and it was great. I mean, it was, <laughs> I was super nervous. Mm. Um, but it, you know, as soon as I got off the plane, as soon as he was there, you know, gave him a hug and he was just, you know, it was, it was totally cool. It was like, we'd known each other forever. We had talked a long time. Um, yeah. And so I met him in the airport and headed to where he was renting um, a place. So um, stayed there for about a week, just he and I. And then it was around Christmas time. And um, we went to his in um, San Antonio. Sorry. <laughs> his family? Nervous. That cut out a minute. Per, he went to his family oh, in San Antonio? His, his family was in San Antonio. We were in Austin. Okay. So we went to see his family. Um, the week, you know, he still had to work during that week I was there. So I would just take his car um, while he was working. It was just super, super fun. Um, he gave me a massage. He was absolutely incredible with with giving massages. He was a massage therapist for sure, right? Before? He was. At the okay. time, he was working, managing a rent-to-own place. <clears throat> okay. and so we spent about a week, and then we drove to San Antonio to meet his parents and for Christmas. So my ex had my kids. Um, we went to visit his family in San Antonio. And so I'd already met Lori. Um a few times. She was working at an Aveda, Aveda salon, um, which was really high class. And she made really good money. We went to her place and <laughs> it was huge. And it was, it was just cool. Um, I met Colby then. Um, sorry, I'm super nervous, Kathy. <laughs> you're doing, you're doing great. You wouldn't know it. I don't know. It doesn't sound like you're nervous. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know it. Okay, so we were meeting Lori at his parents because she was coming with Joe. And yeah, his his parents were super, super sweet. Um, they were funny. Everybody was funny there. They had such a dry sense of humor and <laughs> just the wit was, you know, you could cut it with a knife. It was, it was just funny. Um, they were, I love, little... I love that kind of banter. Like when people are just witty and quick, I, I, right. do, I always appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And I'm like that. Um, and pretty much nothing's off the table, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we make fun of everything and joke about everything and stuff. It was just a really good time. And we had only been there a few hours when Lori and Joe came. And they they were funny too. They would joke about they they weren't married. They were just dating. Um, the family kind of was like, yeah, Lori's you know she's getting married and da 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 da. da. And when they got there, it was just things kind of changed. The everything kind of shifted. And then once we were they were there a couple hours, it got more comfortable, but. They both were very open about what they were doing together. You know, she was like, I'm going to marry a sugar daddy. And he's like, and I'm going to marry a trophy wife. You know what I mean? They, oh, wow. <laughs> they both joked about it. And so Alex wasn't fond of Joe, even back then. Um, so, yeah, it was it was kind of uncomfortable because of that. But then because they joked about it, it, it was just more comfortable. Right, um, right. So Christmas, you know, they had gifts for me. Um, I took some things for them and their family. It was just, it was just really fun, you know. And, but as far as the Mormon part, so I was active at the time. Um, they were different as far as Alex would make fun that they would, you know, dress and act and everything. Like Mormon wear their garments and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then that was for, you know, weekends for, you know, church and stuff like that. But during the regular week, you know, they, they wouldn't wear their garments and they didn't drink or do anything like that. They were just, you know, they, 
they chose what they would go, you know, follow and what they wouldn't. And I mean, I've met, I'm in Idaho now. I've met tons of people like that. You know, there's just a lot. Um, so anyway, I, on Christmas day, um, this was the first Christmas I was away from my kids. It was, I was missing them. Um, Alex was super, super comforting and just sweet. And so my ex was with in Rock Springs, Wyoming with his new girlfriend and she was super, super nice. You know, she and I got along really well, but when I called to talk to my kids, um, my ex was like, Nope. I, I couldn't talk to him. And I was just, I was in the other room and I was just crying and Alex came in and he was super sweet about it, you know, telling me, you know, that's not right. And, you know, it'll be fine. And we'll just call him in a few hours and try again. And <clears throat> excuse me. And so, yeah, I, I tried in a few hours. He, I ended up not talking to my kids until the next day. Oh. And I was just really upset. And in turn, Alex was really upset with Sean because, mm -hmm. you know, Alex had never had kids. Um, he was super, super good with kids. But, you know, Colby was just loved him. You know, they were get down on the floor, play things. You know what I mean? They they just adored Colby. <clears throat> I didn't meet um, Summer. And of course, you know, he was already gone. And so, yeah, it was just, it was just a really good Christmas with them. They, they were super supportive through the rest of our visit. Um, they were really sad about my kids. They were, you know, just comforting. Mm. Uh, so then, you know, we went back to Austin. We spent a little more time together before I had to fly back. Alex, Alex paid for my flight. Um, and he was just really sweet as far as you know, me having a hard time being away from my kids. I had been a stay at home mom for our marriage. And then all of a sudden I was working. And the only thing I could do at the time, because I'd never been away from my kids, I was doing a daycare, mm -hmm. um, a life care. I had 12 kids, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was good money in a, you know, in a little while, but at the time I was really struggling money wise. <clears throat> anyway, so we went back to Austin, um, he did. He gave me another massage. He was super, super sweet. And then I flew back home. Um, we continued just talk all the time. We we spoke a ton. Um, and then he went to Idaho um, or, you know, he went to visit me in Idaho. And my my kids just they clicked from the get go. Um, they they wanted to be around him the whole time they wanted him to do voices the whole time and for the whole visit he was there a week for the whole visit it was just like wonderful he was he was just so incredible with my kids Aww. so I went out and visited him you know about six or seven months later um spent some more time with his family um we talked to Adam on the phone yeah things things were just going well and then he came back so we visited twice to I visited twice to um Austin and then he visited Idaho twice and we talked about marriage um he actually came to Idaho to see job wise what what he could do um we spent some time looking at jobs and you know just just planning we were we were planning to be together mm -hmm. um like I said we talked about marriage nonstop. it was it was just a really good thing um Lori was super super sweet I I just wanted to clear something up as far as what I saw mm -hmm. you know when I did it she was so nice I didn't see anything inappropriate going on um <clears throat> I've I've heard that a few, few a few times sorry yeah um uh, Lori you know as much as they joked um Lori still you know I think she wanted to be with Joe. Um, but Joe had a temper and I think they were all kind of concerned about that. Oh. Um, I know this doesn't go with what everyone's saying now. Um, we, I ended up um, breaking it off and I just thought down the road we would get back together. But at the time with him never having kids and 
you know, you, you really, I think a lot of times if you have an X or something like that, that's difficult to work with, mm -hmm. um, people that don't have kids don't understand that you, you give in a lot to, you know, your, your ex or whatever, if you think it's going to be better for the kids. Right. And mm -hmm. so he just had such a hard time, like. Understanding you know, every, that. Yeah. And everybody wanted to, you know, it was like, take him to court, do this or this or this. And they don't understand that every time you go to court, it doesn't take care of what happened right then. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Um, I've been there, been there completely. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he, he would get really angry with Sean. He never met Sean in person, but it, the things that my ex did, they were, they were totally wrong, but nothing I could take care of right then, you know? Sure. And he, he would just get very protective, very angry, not at me, but he would just be like, you know, he just couldn't believe Sean was that way. He shouldn't be able to do this. You know, when I'm there, you know, it'll be different. And <clears throat> so as much as I appreciated him standing up for me and, you know, just adoring my kids that it, it just wasn't going to work with my kids being so young and him not knowing how to deal with an ex. And, you know, it wasn't about the wins. It was about just my kids. Right. So, you know, we, we continued to talk on and off. Um, I had been trying to get a hold of him when I was coming back from Boise and yeah, I, I was going to speak to him again. You know, it was, my kids are older now. Um, I just thought, honestly, we would end up together. I, I didn't have any red flags with him. Um, his family, they were just incredibly sweet and nice to me. Um, yeah, they, we, you know, we talked about he and I being together. It was, it was very open. Their whole family was very open and just, I, I, can't say anything bad you know I, I see what's happening now um before Alex died I was I was absolutely sure that the kids must be somewhere else because I could not imagine Alex doing anything to children he was just he was that person that was just incredibly great with kids yeah it's um, so weird I yeah mean, <clears throat> that must just and blow it, your mind really it it breaks my heart and blows my yeah. mind I Right. still wanted not to believe it um and as more and more come out you know i i have to talk a little bit about the lds side mm -hmm. um as more comes out you know i knew i know that he's he's the one that did it i think so so let me go to the lds side of how frustrating that was for me okay so when you're lds it's it's a big kind of like competition in some ways because, you know, everybody wants to have this vision or you know, feel like they've, you know, gotten answers to their prayers and all kinds of stuff. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people get very depressed if they don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, I've been listening to Mormon stories, which is a lot of people that have left the church just to understand that side of it. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm looking at like, if they, if they thought Chad, I think so much of this is on Chad's sh shoulders. And I think that people just want to kind of brush Chad away because Alex and Lori are such a, you know, it's just a better, <laughs> it's a whole family you can cut down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I look at Chad and I think none of this would have happened. Not in, unless you believe that she killed Joe, you would mm -hmm. never think think that you know this was them their fault um i think chad was the catalyst in this he definitely you know started all of this and he's the one that you know if you believe in me then you have to believe what i tell you as far as kids being dark and family being dark and anyway on and on in my head that's just a man wanting to be with Lori. you know what i mean he mm -hmm. he made whole thing up and I don't know if he believed it or not I I have a hard time thinking that he actually believed it um except for he had been boosted up for a long time to think that you know everybody's gonna believe what he says and then you know maybe in his own mind he was he was that person that knew all this but yeah I I think that 
you know, if you if you listen to a couple things on that LDS thing, just about people that are gay, um, any of the anybody that's queer, that you know, it's it's a huge thing as far as the church. You're you're just not accepted, okay. and that's just one idea of it. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't think Lori went into this being this horrible mother. Um, I think that if she believed what Chad said, then all of that other stuff is believable too. Um, I, mm. I never saw her as being somebody that would hurt her kid. Um, I, I never met the other kids and, but yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think she would ever do that just on her own. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. And you know, I mean, the Woodcocks say that too. They said she was a good mom, you know, she was such um, she really was. And I come into terms with them, you know, the actual act of doing that mm -hmm. makes me, makes me sick. Um, it makes me sad. And at the same time, I'm grateful that he and I weren't together because, you know, Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Blessing in disguise, really, you know, it really was. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a big part of it is the church part and just, just coming to terms with that in the end. But I don't believe she did anything to, to Joe. Um, I do totally see Alex doing that to Joe, what he did. Um, as oh, far yes. as the, taser. Mm -hmm. the taser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, he was so protective and so, so he was protective of kids in general. Mm -hmm. He, he would tell people, you know, just have no qualms with telling you what he thought of people that would do things to kids. Um, so I know that doesn't sit right with what they did. I do believe that listening to Rob Wood um, at the very beginning of this, telling, you know, the people in Arizona that he apps her, her family, that he absolutely believes that she believed all of this stuff. And that was, you know, Rob, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't on that, think it was on Lori. That with that summer recording. Yeah. 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 Rob was like, yeah, that I absolutely believe she, she believed all this. Um, I don't think it's Lori, um, taking advantage of anybody, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know how to say it, but even, even her going into the hospital, um, what, what did they, she was determined. What was the word? Incompetent. Yeah, so so that's not her that was choosing the incompetency, because we don't have um, mental health issues. We don't. Well, we do have them. That's not what I meant. We don't have, um, you know, saying that you're insane. We don't have the insanity plea. Right. Um. So when something's mental health wise, they have to deal with it. You know, we can't just take a plea, or they can't just take a plea of insanity or whatever. She mm -hmm. wasn't the one who chose to go into the hospital. You know, that was. That was other people saying that she she is not in touch with the real world. And so I absolutely believe that that's true. Um, and it is something in Idaho that you can actually do. Um, but but again, she doesn't choose it. It's other people. And do you know who decided? I, I heard it once um, who decided that she was incompetent. But I don't think it was. The judge playing, you know, that was had fallen for her. I don't think, you know, Rob Wood, he has his own issues, but I know that Lori, that's just the way she acted. I yeah. just from when she was young. Um, and she was a pleaser. Well, you know, hundred percent she was a pleaser. And so yeah, I, I just I don't see her she didn't choose the insanity or the well, and I, you're right. I mean, I think we have to trust the mental health or the health care system, the pro the professionals on this one. I mean, really, I, you know, I as part of the health care system, I can't imagine me going, oh, no, I know more. You know what I mean? Than those people right. that are evaluating her, you know, so, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, she's she's going to be in there until they think that she's in touch with the real world world. And um, yeah, so. I just wanted to give my view of the family because it's so much different than everyone else's. And don't talk to anyone about this. Um, don't even talk to my kids. You know, I, I really keep it to myself because where I live, it's 
total judgment. I mean, I would mm. be getting, you know, all over. And I just, I don't want to bring that on my kids. I don't want right. to deal with it. Yeah. So I did have a call from Nate um, way, way back when this started. And yeah, I didn't because of something I'd said online. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. He yeah. I saw you. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. I was, nope, I want nothing to do with it. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been since the start that I've really kept my mouth shut. Um, and I don't follow the case closely. Um, and, you know, the funny thing is, like in Rexburg, where I have friends and family, because, you know, the church, mm -hmm. um, yeah, not not everybody knows about this case. It's it's really surprising because people online think everyone knows, and it's it's just not like that. You know, even if people do know and they don't follow it, they really don't have a lot to say about it because they're not in the middle of the drama. You know? Yeah, I mean, I ask people. I mean, I'm not. I'm in California, but I ask people all the time because, especially people know I have my you know people, are friends and family that know I my channel, and they're like. But you have a true crime channel? Like, what do you talk about? And I'm like, well, I've been following this one case, you know, the Daybell case. Do you know about them? And they're like, no. And then every once in a while, he's like, oh, you mean the one that the two kids were in the backyard? And that's pretty much all they know, you know? So, yeah, I, I believe that there is a lot of people out there that don't know the details. And you really have to study this case to understand all the avenues it goes down. So, absolutely. But, yeah. you know, it, I, I wouldn't have known about all of the in depth things because. So I just started YouTube probably three or four years ago, but it, it was, I looked at just politics. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would, I would just be surprised at how much misinformation was out there and still now, you know, lots of misinformation, but I kind of stopped with the politics. It was just too stressful. Right. <laughs> and um, my daughter got me into true crime. Oh. And so, yeah, I, I was. So you were you following know. true crime before this all went down? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. So were you just and, blown away when you heard who the people were that were involved? Oh, you know what? My my friend um, showed me a picture and I was like, wait, I know her. Oh, <laughs> and um, yeah. And then I just shut right up and I was like, I'm going to have to see if that's really her. And I, just in my mind, I was like, OK, I need to look into this because, you know, this was at the very start and they were just like, this is so weird. I'm like, uh huh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Oh so, my gosh, I can't imagine. Uh, it, it was so, yeah, I, I still listen. I listen to you. Um, I, you know, read and watch all of your stuff. Um, it's, it is super interesting to follow, but it's also super frustrating because I just yeah. I never saw any of that in the people that I knew. Yeah. Just, well, his dad, and, his dad, <laughs> his dad. What? His dad was odd. Was he? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask much about that. He, he definitely, <laughs> he was an odd duck. So, yeah. But again, being odd or whatever, they were still incredibly sweet to me. And mm -hmm. it's funny, you know, I laughed so much around all of them. So did they ever and, talk about Stacy, that the sister? They did. Alex, you know he would talk about losing, you know, his sister and he was emotional about it. It was still, you know, it had, it had only been a little while and, you know, a few years, but yeah, it was, it was really, really hard. And there were some deep talks that we all had um, at his family's and, you know, it wasn't a family saying, you know, it wasn't something like they're talking about, you know, how mm. probably wanted her to die. They probably this and that, you know, I, Again, the the family that I knew, they were not like that, but they were, um, they kind of kept to themselves still, you know, San Antonio is huge. Um, I, I didn't know of people that they were around in San Antonio or anything like that, but it was definitely a family, you know, had gone through some loss. Right. So, yeah, they've had a lot. Um, do you think when they had that one interview with Janice and Summer and they were like, oh, no, Lori would never, Alex would never. Do you, you think that Janice and Summer truly believe that Lori and Alex oh, were not capable of that? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I absolutely think that they were being honest because that's how I felt until mm -hmm. they had found it. I was like, there is no way they did this 
to kids. They, they loved him. There's just no way. So I think anyone that knew him or Janice or, you know, any, yeah. anybody, they would think that they were being completely honest in that interview. But I do think that there was a part of them was thinking, you know, if this is true, <laughs> this is our son or our brother, you know what I mean? And right. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I think that they were man. being the honest at the time. Because everybody gave a, gave a pretty hard time about them. Like they knew, they lied, the phone bill and all that stuff. But, right. um, but and I, it, mm -hmm. sorry, no, it's like any parent, you know, mm -hmm. um, I would have a hard time thinking that about my kids. But, you know, if I was hearing some of the other stuff in the back of my mind, I would be like, um, you know, it may be some of it may be possible. You know what I mean? You think that, but you don't say it because it's your kid. You know, you don't right. want to believe. It. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I think that, that they were being honest, so, but that's, you know, that's yeah. my end. That's how I, I felt. I think that that's really good. I'm, I'm really glad that you came on here and we're able to talk about this because we have not heard this side, you know, everybody's been attacking the Coxes and Lori and, you know, and I mean, I, I do think Lori's pretty superficial and she likes nice things. And I mean, that's not right. to be disputed, but, but it's interesting when, cause I've gone back and forth in my head about how it came to this and really that she really get like her mind just warped by Chad and his belief system. And I kind of have to lean towards yes on that because of the fact that, you know, she has those kids and she seemed to really love them and adore them. So I just, it just, it's the whole thing is just, I don't know. I still can't wrap my mind around it. And I don't even know these people. Right. I look at like Warren Jeffs. I look at, you know, anyone that was a cult leader or something like that. Mm -hmm. I look at how they blame the cult leader, but they see the other people as victims because they believed in him because, you know, they were kind of conditioned to do so. Um, but I, I think it's very interesting in this whole thing Chad's been on the back burner. They kind of don't give Chad much crap. It's all about Lori and Alex and their family, you know, because I think they just have a lot more people that's in on it. But mm -hmm. with Chad, no one spoke, you know, held him up or said that, no, there's no way he could do that. You know, people are just kind of not worrying about Chad. Um, but I think Chad's the catalyst. I think that he definitely was the one that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it as a cult and a cult leader and people that follow and it was all his ratings and systems and all those messages now that we've seen between people asking him what he thinks about this and, you know, Zalema with her questions to him about somebody in her house that, you know, she's seen or whatever that seems dark. And then he's, his answer is yes. And, you know, when you look at all those little details, it does really appear that Chad was running the show. I, I don't picture you know i don't picture alex and lori at all doing this on their own or thinking anything about any of those things until chad came into their life and to be honest lori would have never been with someone like chad if it was you know if it wasn't something much much deeper do you know what i mean right. i think they absolutely believed in the stuff he was selling and yeah she she <laughs> You're right. She definitely liked nice things. She was definitely, you know, always on top about her look. Um, yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't see her falling for a guy like Chad, especially from all accounts. She was very happy with um, Charles. So, yeah, it sounds it, like it. And they were together for, what, 14 years or something? It was a yeah. long time for her to all of a sudden flip a switch and be like, oh, you know, you're ned schneider and zombie right. and yeah <laughs> Wait, what? you don't, don't go around saying that stuff unless you believe it you know what i mean there's i think that they absolutely 100 percent believed it and yeah. i think uh chad absolutely had to know that it wasn't true so it, it's yeah. like you know, mormons following a prophet you mm -hmm. you have to believe what they're saying or you wouldn't just blindly follow them true so you know yeah. i think that's yeah. in it situation in any religion you know it's only as good as their members so very true that's just my outlook on it um it breaks my heart alex is gone i don't think 
I, I still don't think it was natural causes. Um, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think there's something to that. So it just, you know, they were every, every thing as far as what I saw was that they are really good people. Um, yeah. Hmm. Thanks. I think Alex was just an incredible, incredible guy. Then it just makes it even sadder to hear that, you know, because we kind of want him to be an asshole. I mean, really, you know what I I mean? Yep. And they're picking up anything that's, you know, iffy. And again, social media is, uh, you know, (laughs) it can be good or bad. And they only cherry pick what they want out there, you know, and Mm -hmm. I they're putting their life before to fit their life now and that's just not how it was wow this is awesome thank you uh, very insightful and interesting i know i know you were like i don't know if anybody's gonna care what i have to say but i actually think this is really really important and interesting and to hear human you know the human side of them before this all went down and how you feel about that so yep and it's just not worth it to me to say anything, you know, to say these things when the only thing that could possibly happen is a lot of blowback on me. So it's just, I can't deny how I felt. I can't deny what they were like around me. That's, right. that's just what, that's my story. Right. And it's your story. You, nobody can make you change your story. It's yours and it's how you feel. So, but I mean, you know, you know how it is on, you know, I'm sure there'll be comments and don't just don't read them. <laughs> I, I think there'll be a lot of support too. I really do. I, you know, my channel tends to have a really good group of people that follow. I, I hope so. Yeah. No, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Anything okay. else you want to add before we end? I No, I just, you know, just know that there's other people out there like me that are just nervous to say anything because sure. of. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it's got to be really hard. Look, we're going into the third year of this, so. It took you, you know, a long time to even be willing, <laughs> I guess, right? I got the interview before Nate. I'm pretty impressed with myself right now. <laughs> right. It's, it's, I, don't, I don't want it just all over. Yeah, so right. like, no. totally. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Now, and we do have a good community. You've been part of it. I, I, you said you follow the channel and stuff. So, yeah. we, you know, I hope that it'll be comfortable enough for me to post this and I will do it as a premiere. So there will be a chat. Um, You're okay with that? Yeah, I am. I mean, yeah, it's, it's my truth. Very just it. All right. Well, Susan, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you being here. And um, I'll let you know when I'm going to post this. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome.